Voluntary obligation is a technique best, uh, best in polite society referred to as making someone eat their words. When one accepts the notion of free will, how does one reconcile being totally hostage to a previous sentence that he would like to change, right? Short of someone citing a signed contract, what is the shame in one changing their minds, even in the absence of new facts, right? Take this, right? Your wife asked you to do dinner Thursday. Today's Monday. And in your haste, you say, okay, okay, I'll do it. Even better, both of you know you weren't listening, nor actually meant okay. You simply wanted to be left to whatever your mind was previously focused on, as your focus is singular. She knows that, you know that. Yet when Thursday arrives, you are absolutely bound to dinner plans. When you exclaim not remembering, agreeing to such plans that you would have never have you understood what she was asking, that you had a particular event you've been waiting for to air tonight, like your favorite whatever, like a, a game. Therefore, you would have never agreed. None of it actually matters. At this point, you're pleading for her mercy. Knowing full well you cannot welch on this voluntary obligation. Why? Well, again, it's very simple. The answer you may have found repetitive by now, but is that how our brains are wired? In the path we continue to build, we take steps towards those who are consistent and steps away from those who are inconsistent. Society at large has deemed inconsistency as an incredibly undesirable trait as it's often associated with like indecisiveness and a decreased level of mental aptitude, right? Like intelligence. Therefore, we do our best to be a man of our word. Because higher functioning society requires a level of trust. And as such, this principle acts as a key disqualifying factor in those who are desirable and those who are undesirable, right? Like that girl you would ask out who would say yes, then something would always come up. Regardless of how much you liked her and how pretty she was, you moved on. That friend whose car always broke down or ran out of gas last second, regardless of how much fun he was, you stopped hanging out with him. Or that contact who swears they can always get you that event ticket, um, but whose phone dies that week. Regardless of the ticket price, you have learned to pay and happily pay full price. Or how about that restaurant which served you your favorite dish, like of all time, and has since been unable to replicate it? You stopped going to it. If someone or something is inconsistent, we are wired not to trust, prefer, or even like them. Conversely, how about that restaurant which is really so-so, um, but they always save a seat for you when you want to dine. You're a regular there. Or how about that girl that laughs like a goofball, but texts you back right away to make plans? You're now dating. Or how about that car which is really not going to turn any heads, but it's also never broken down? You bought it. Or how about that house that doesn't have an in-ground pool and is this weird, like, green color, but it's within a community which always prioritizes safety and childhood education? You now live in it. This technique is as, is as valuable as the status of the prospect we are targeting. When preparing our call, Tomorrow, we want to call our prospect first thing this morning. Well, first thing tomorrow morning. Preferably early enough to get a voicemail or secretary. It's important we put ourselves in a position to be seen, to be so supremely dedicated to our work that of course we're in that early to make that call at that time. You know, this message will, will read, Hi, Mr. Jones, I'm very much looking forward to our call today at, you know, like four o'clock. If you need to change our reservation, will you please call me back at, and here's my number. Thank you and chat later. I don't even think you know how powerful that is. Because your confirmation requires his action, then subsequently his inaction is also an action. And his inaction is confirming the call, resulting in him being obligated to take the call at that time, or being incredibly apologetic and bound to the obligation of making it up to you rather than being seen as someone inconsistent. More times than not, it would take him to record your number down, call you back, it's easy to procrastinate that, resulting in once four o'clock goes around, his implicit voluntary obligation to make that call. So when in conversation, you wanna take notes, not write a novel, but details that stick out, whether it be points of agreement, points of contest, or fun facts. All of them are incredibly valuable. 
Because upon the completion of any conversation, you want to then write a two paragraph email outlining all of your notes, structured accordingly to the principles of this curriculum. Your last sentence then be, and if I may, is this an accurate representation of what we decided today? I want to make sure we are moving forward on the same page. Once they email you back and reply yes, they will be bound to the power of this principle. Remember, people live up to what they write down. Hence, signatures being the standard form of, you know, sealing contracts. Anytime you can craft an opportunity to have your target write something down, it is gold, and you take it. Anytime you have an opportunity to make them agree to something voluntarily and out loud, it is gold, and you take it.